Let's see, have I done a Charles Band movie on this show yet? No? Well, better fix that. <laughs> Terror Vision is a 1986 horror comedy produced and co-written by Charles Band and distributed by his company, Empire Pictures, which specialized in low- to mid-budget horror movies like Reanimator, From Beyond, Troll, and other movies I haven't gotten to on this show yet. I think the nearest comparison I can make is what Canon Films was to action movies in the 80s, Empire was to horror. Charles Band would also later form the company Full Moon Entertainment, famous for making the Puppet Master and Subspecies films. So if you browse the horror section of your local video store in the 80s and 90s, chances are you saw some of his movies sitting on the shelves. So with such a vast library, including several cult classics to choose from, why did I pick this as the first Charles Band movie featured on this show? I don't know, I just felt like it. Maybe it's because the model work makes me think of Gamera. And come on, movie, we all know Pluton isn't considered a planet anymore. This is an alien sanitation department, which disposes of mutant monsters that look like the inside of Satan's colon by disintegrating them and beaming them into the opening credits of Spaced Out. Oh, my mistake, it's the opening credits of Terror Vision. And how about that theme song? like the Cramps meets the B-52s. I like it. Eh, figures that a guy named Band also did the music. Don't sit too close to the opening credits, kids. You ruin your eyesight. So the movie centers on the Putterman family, who by the looks of it live in Bob Guccione's Malibu Dream Home. The parents are Stanley, played by Garrett Graham, and Raquel, played by Mary Warrenov. Eh, shit, that reminds me. I gotta do Phantom of the Paradise and Death Race 2000 on this show sometime. Stanley's busy installing a new satellite dish. That way these two can actually watch some of the movies they've been in. Jeez, giant satellite dishes, aerobics gear. Could this movie get any more 80s? Hey, my TV flipped out. It sure can. This is the Putterman's daughter, Susie, a.k.a. Frank Zappa's valley girl in human form. Oh, Daddy. Dork. Oh yeah? Well, he's not the one who looks like if Cindy Lauper joined Jim and the Holograms. Never mind that, though. We still need to introduce Grandpa Putterman. You know what about the U2s? Uh, the band? No, the spy planes. Oh, yeah! I think I saw him on MTV! MTV? Fully! Yeah, you said it, Grandpa. I hate reality shows. And does every character look like they wandered in from a John Waters movie? I mean, give me a break, guy. I need a hand here. Sorry, Mr. Putterman, no can do. The warranty covers repairs only. Does the warranty also cover wanting to bang your customer's wife? And since we apparently need a little kid character, here's the last member of the Putterman family, Sherman. Belly down, soldier! The geeks aren't through with you yet! Bam! 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 Listen, kid, I wouldn't play around with your grandpa like that. That gun is probably loaded, and one day he will pull the trigger on you. Stanley's having a little trouble with the satellite dish, but he probably just needs a little more power. What the hell was that? Don't worry, it's just the plot. Oh, looks like they got the dish working. And it even gets my YouTube channel. But, does it get HBO? No, that would cost extra. Eh, figures. So what does it get? Channel 69. Eh, Channel 69's not as impressive once you learn Rule 34 is a thing. If only the creators of My Little Pony knew what the future held. Things go a little haywire when Grandpa tries hogging the remote so he can watch Matlock, and instead turns it to the intro of Captain N the Game Master. But it's nothing a little horror movie marathon won't fix. Hello, bloodsuckers. Ready to be turned to stone. Oh boy, Medusa! She's certainly got the assets to be a good horror host. Will you look at those hooters? Yes, thank you, Grandpa. That's what I was getting at. And hold off on the horror marathon. We still need to introduce Susie's boyfriend. Charge! Odie's played by John Grease, who is also the Wolfman in the Monster Squad, which I guess explains why his hair looks like he just skinned a poodle. And you're not fooling anyone with that outfit, pal. You in the metal? 
Kiss the boot, man. You're about as metal as Night Ranger. No wonder Stanley looks so unimpressed. He was into shock rock way before this guy was. The parents leave Sherman and Grandpa alone to go swinging. Okay, good to know this family's open and honest with each other, I guess. And are these two just gonna watch monster movies all night? Who do they think they are? Me? Keep a safe break, Roman. Lose the deep sea helmet guy and quit monkeying around. Hmm, let's see. Big cleavage? Bad puns? Well, clearly Medusa's based on Mr. Lobo. And don't bother changing the channel, Grandpa. The only other thing on is Terror Vision. Well, do something, you ugly bastard! Man, this is the dumbest movie I ever saw. Oh, believe me, kid. There is way dumber out there. And damn it, movie, I already reviewed the giant claw. Get back to Terror Vision. They fall asleep with the TV on, and unfortunately for them, the satellite also picks up channels from Japan. Seriously, what the fuck is that thing doing? <laughs> oh god, it's the purse from my stepmother as an alien! Grandpa's convinced it was just a burglar, because in the 80s, all burglars looked like Jabba the Hutt's shit. It looks... weird! Sometimes them burglars wear Halloween masks. They scare the poop out of you. No, that's just your incontinence, Grandpa. Lucky for them, Gramps has his own personal armory built inside the house. And don't mind the Confederate flag. He's just a big fan of Dukes of Hazard. The repairman also comes by to check on the satellite dish again. And I'm not sure if this is supposed to be the Putterman's backyard or just another room in their house. Oh, well, there's your problem. Somebody put a David Cronenberg movie in here. Stay right where you are. We thought we saw a burglar. Do you see anyone? No, not me, guy. <laughs> you wouldn't by any chance have one of them Halloween masks in there, would you? No, no, that's another 80s movie where TV kills people. Nice to know Picasso went through a bondage period. The monster offs the repairman, but on the plus side, at least it didn't leave a mess. However, the same can't be said for Grandpa. Look, kid, don't feel bad. He was either gonna die from this or a stroke. This was a lot faster. Meanwhile, the parents return home with their swinger partners, Marcy, Darcy, and yuppie Ricardo Montalban. Are they really going to do this with the kids at home? Oh, is he going to be joining us? Charming. The parents may be surprised, but this guy's face says he'd actually be into that. The parents don't seem to notice the mess the monster left, but then they don't seem to be the most observant people ever. Hey, Nort! Looking good, guy! Hey, uh, listen, I'd invite you in for a beer or something, but we got company now, so take off, okay? I'll check with you later. Appreciate it, babe. There's no one there, dummy. At least the Putterman swinger partners seem impressed with their home. That TV's got to be at least 16 inches. What is, what is this movie? I think I read for a part in it one time. Unless it was for Betty Boop, you shouldn't be reading for a part in anything. Bunch of creeps. Please tell me their plans tonight involve a ball gag somehow. People of Earth. You must heed my warning. Destroy your satellite receivers. I, I don't know. Jeez, it, it looks kind of like that Japanese thing. Now, now, I already made a hentai joke, Stanley. We also learned the monster can imitate the people it's killed, so I guess it's really the John Carpenter version of the Things crap. Not that it really matters, since no one seems to notice his face is covered in snot. Or was Grandpa known for having a runny nose? Something weird's going on, I swear! Sherman Putterman, I am fed up! If you're too big of a sissy to spend the night alone, then you'll just spend the night with Grandpa! No, Mom! Listen, kid, this is probably for the best. It was either this or listen to your parents fuck strangers all night. Sherman calls Medusa to see if she'll believe him about the monster, and considering what her show is like, I'm surprised that's not a 1-900 number on screen. Me here? Who's there? Well, this is Sherman, and I have this problem, and nobody believes me. Grandpa and me, we were sleeping, and then we woke up, and there was this monster. Whoa, 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 I'm the one recapping the plot, okay? Medusa doesn't believe him either, but maybe she can help him another way. Come here, Sherman. Okay, if this movie goes full Videodrome, I'm out of here. This one's for you, babe. <laughs> eh, he still busted a nut. Ah, Crystal Pepsi Shooters, the sign of any great swingers party. However, Raquel runs into a bit of a snag. 
Has there been some uh, misunderstanding? I like boys. Stanley is such a manly man. Oh my god, Stanley's never gonna believe this. I know, you mean gay people are actually real? I thought they were like leprechauns or something. Not that it seems to matter, since he just goes back to the pool to bang his girlfriend anyway. So that subplot lasted all of two minutes. Back in the 80s, nothing turned a woman on quite like the sight of a six-foot stick of beef jerky with hair plugs. But something's not right here. What is this? Algae? <sighs> Maybe it's a sex lubricant. Well, that is what they make movie slime out of, so... Yeah, you're probably right. The guy, of course, ends up getting eaten by the monster, but the look on his face says it was still totally worth it. Kinda ruined the Putterman's plans, though. Wait a minute. What is that? Well, ain't it obvious? It's the trash compactor monster from Star Wars. And how in the hell are Garrett Graham and Mary Warrenoff dead already? Garrett didn't even get to sing Life at Last. When even calling Batman doesn't work, Sherman decides to take matters into his own hands. Remember what I taught you about explosives, boy? Blow your dang balls off! What? That's terrible advice! And where the hell did Susie and her boyfriend go? Oh, there they are. They were out joyriding in OD's life-size Hot Wheels car. And I see Grandpa didn't teach Sherman about gun safety. There's a monster loose! I think it just say Mom and Dad! Honestly, Sherman, sometimes you are such a nerd! Sis! Don't go in there. Or else what, you'll shoot her? Put the gun down, you little shit. So what's the deal, Sherm? Where's the big monster? Where's mom and dad? Are you really sure you want to know the answer to that? Hi, kids. Remember, kids, you do your thing, we do ours. You know, I get the feeling this is how the parents' night would have ended anyway, regardless of the monster showing up. I thought I was a monster. That's okay, Sherman. Someday you'll understand. Or you'll become a porn actor. It could go either way. The Puttermans might want to return their satellite dish. It seems to be stuck on the same episode of Star Trek Enterprise. Oh, and there's also the monster. <laughs> Relax, it's just Michael Rooker from Slither. No! No! Get away! Don't kill me, man! I still haven't seen Twisted Sister live yet! However, the monster spares him when he sparks a memory of when it was taken care of by Rob Halford? I guess? Did you see that? He looked right at my studs and cooled out. This dude's into metal! He's so barfy! Oh, hey, for once that word's actually appropriate. Hey, you guys remember that movie? You know, the one about the little space guy. Made you cry like a butthole? Mac and me? E.T. stupid. You're stupid! So no joke, these three spend the next several minutes of the movie bonding with the monster and teaching it about Earth. Food, mmm, see? It's good for you. You know this thing still killed most of your immediate family. Just because it didn't eat Uncle Rico here doesn't mean it's your friend. Now this is my band. I wrote this song. Hey, you didn't write that. And what was your name again? I'm O.D. Oh, right, O.D. He's called that because he's an original dipshit. And we haven't seen Medusa in a while. I had a date the other night. I turned all the lights off and I whispered to him, Whatever you do, honey, don't look at me. Ah, she's got the same kinks as Frank Booth. Don't you look at me, fuck! Okay, you taught this thing about Earth. Now what? What are we gonna do with it? We're gonna make a million bucks. Nah, 320,000 is the best this does at the box office. They decide the best way to make money off the monster is to put it on TV, but instead of contacting the news, they just call Medusa again. I don't know if a 3 a.m. cable access show is gonna give you the biggest audience, kids. He's a real live monster! We wanna know how to get him on TV! Listen, kid, you want a guest spot talk to the Letterman people? Oh, and you mean Medusa talks differently when she's off the air? I bet those snakes aren't even real either. They convince her to come by saying they're throwing a party, but I think something might be wrong with the monster. Hey! I said shut up, butthole! Wow, who would have guessed the disgusting turd monster that killed several people already would prove to be hostile? They decide to use Grandpa's weapons to try and kill the monster, which is probably what they should have done instead of feeding it TV dinners. Ew! 
to be fair, that would have been a reaction to seeing your parents' bed regardless of the monster being there. And hey, the monster may be a disgusting killer, but at least he's a Ray Harryhausen fan. And how's this for a climax? When guns prove to be ineffective, they just throw the remote into the pool, which actually seems to get rid of it. Now, clearly the filmmakers meant this as an allegory for the negative effects of watching too much television, and wanted to show that the only solution is to simply turn it off. Or maybe they just couldn't think of a way to get rid of the monster, I don't know. Oh, and thanks for finally deciding to show up, alien guy. Would have been nice if you just told him to throw the remote in the pool in the first place instead of doing the same, what's the matter for you, uh, hand motions over and over again. But now that he's here, at least he can provide some exposition. I mean you no harm. I am Pluthar, here to save you. Like what is going on around here? On my planet, the Hungry Beast is a house pet, similar to your earthly dogs and cats. And forget about the alien, Medusa's here. Good God, if those things were pushed up any higher, she could motorboat herself. Which I actually wouldn't mind seeing. Medusa also ends up killing the spaceman, which is perfectly understandable considering it looked like he was holding the kids at gunpoint. Hey idiot, if you're there to help, maybe put your fucking weapon down. What, that's it? Sure you didn't mean something like Pukatronic? And why do they need this guy anyway? I thought they got rid of the monster when they threw the remote in the pool. Oh yeah! Oh, my mistake. Turns out all the bodily fluids their parents put in that pool just made this thing stronger. And then they all died by having their insides sucked out through their faces. The end. Okay, that's not quite the end. This is. The Studio Allen make it snappy! Come on, come on. Okay, so Medusa's a little mutated, but as long as the cleavage is intact, she can still host the show. Terror Vision received only a limited theatrical release and wasn't exactly loved by critics, and today it only has a 0% rating on Rotten Tomatoes? Even Jack and Jill managed to get a 3. Okay, can't say I agree with that. At least this movie's aware that it's bad. Don't get me wrong, Terror Vision isn't what you traditionally call a good movie, but it knows that and just decides to have fun with it. In a way, it's kind of like the schlocky monster movies the characters watch on TV, just filtered through every 1980s stereotype imaginable and cranked up to 11. The cast members know exactly what they're in and mug accordingly, and in a refreshing twist, it has a little kid character who plays straight man to the wacky adults instead of trying to take over the movie. Yeah, it's campy, yeah, it's stupid, but come on. Would you really want a movie about an alien turd monster that comes through the TV to be anything else? But if there's one thing we can learn from this movie, it's the TV rots your brain. Which is why you should get all your entertainment from the internet. After all, we've got Rule 34 here. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Mm-hmm. <laughs>